I said it before when we were wondering which Ed was best, and I'm gonna say it again here. Eddie is my favorite character in Ed and Nettie. To be fair, he doesn't have a lot of competition because there's what? 12 characters, maybe? Still though, Eddie's my guy. That's my name. And if you know anything about me or my personal tastes, this shouldn't come as a shock at all. My favorite characters are always the ones with a ton of layers. Ones that you can discuss and analyze for hours and hours and it never gets old. Like Clay Puppington in Moral Oral or Kenny McCormick in South Park. Ed and Eddie's a comedy show and purely a comedy show at that. So it goes without saying that it's not going to be as deep as those shows, but by comedy show standards, Eddie has quite a lot to him. In order to get into the meat of the character, we have to look at Eddie's surroundings. How does he interact with the other characters in the cul-de-sac? And when we figure that out, we can start taking a look at the number one issue that drives Eddie as a character, even if we didn't really learn it until the finale. Firstly, let's start with his best friends, the other Eds, Ed and Double D. Ed is a big lovable oaf that, in all honesty, provides a classic cartoon trope to his and Eddie's dynamic. The big stupid guy and the small yappy guy is a trope as old as time itself. Or at least cartoons. Actually, now that I think of it, it dates back even before cartoons. Have you seen Abbott and Costello? Ed is basically willing to do anything that Eddie says, and Eddie knows it full well. That means whenever their scam has some dirty work involved, Eddie will always make Ed do it, and Ed will always do it with a smile on his face, even if he doesn't exactly do it correctly. What? But yeah, that's kind of half of Eddie and Ed's interactions, is Eddie bossing Ed around and Ed being totally cool with it. The other half is them poking fun at others or getting in trouble because, let's face it, they have a very similar sense of humor. Which is good. Eddie kinda needs somebody to laugh with, but more on that later. Then there's his other best friend, Ed with two Ds, or Double D as his friends call him. Double D is way smarter than Ed could ever hope to be, but his personal flaw is that he's way too much of a pushover. He'll let Eddie push him around with basically no consequence. Thank you. I needed that. No matter how hard Double D objects to Eddie's schemes, he always goes right along with it. And then when Eddie gets punished, Double D gets dragged down right along with him. Seems kinda strange, doesn't it? Eddie has two best friends, but he doesn't seem to treat either of them very well. One of them is his whipping mule, and the other one is his, uh, smarter whipping mule. But how does it get for the rest of the cast? Well, first off, there's Kevin. Kevin is basically Eddie's arch enemy. When you get down to it, Kevin is basically a more successful Eddie. Kevin thinks he's way cooler than everybody else, is generally overconfident, and is a jerk to those around him, especially his quote-unquote friends. Kevin is kind of the neighborhood cool kid. Even if you don't necessarily like him, you always want to be seen with him because it's going to give you that much more credibility. When you put two people with that exact personality together, there's going to be some explosions. There's going to be a lot of trouble. Eddie can never let Kevin one-up him, and whenever he's out there to torment one of the kids in the cul-de-sac, Kevin is always his first choice. And he sees the rest of the kids, except for Naz, who he has a crush on, as beneath him. Naz wants to talk to me. <laughs> Sarah and Jimmy are two annoying kids, Rolf is an oddball, and Johnny is the... well, he's Johnny. This is best shown on display in the episode Once Upon an Ed. Eddie's retelling a story with a fair bit of embellishment, and in said story, Eddie's basically the top guy of the town. Everybody's fawning over him and treating him like he's the best guy in the world. All the kids want to be his friend because he's so darn awesome. Because I love you. <laughs> but of course, Eddie won't give them the time of day because they're beneath him. They're the lowlifes, the commoners. He's Eddie. He doesn't need them. All he needs is his vast empire and his superior intellect. Of course, Eddie doesn't have an empire yet, so all he can really rely on is him being superior to everybody else. Even if he doesn't necessarily think that. Let me tell you, the finale changes everything. We see Eddie in a whole new light, and it makes you look back at everything he did and the way he's been acting in all the episodes, and you really start to question, is Eddie really that big of a jerk? Take a look at all those interactions and relationships I told you about. What's the common theme? 
It's Eddie wanting to be on top, being the dominant force, a sort of leader, if you will. You're messing with the king here! And this is all because of one aspect, or more specifically, one person. Eddie's brother. Throughout the entire series, Eddie's been gushing about his brother. My brother showed me how to make it before he went away. Isn't it beautiful? My brother does this. My brother has that. My brother's the top guy, and oh, he's just so cool. Oh, and also, we're totally best buds. Hiya, bro. What's up? It's me, Eddie, all grown up and living the life. But that's not true. Yeah, maybe Eddie's brother was once the coolest guy in the world, but now he's just some loser working at the carnival. Eddie's never really gonna see him that way, though, because ever since he was little, Eddie always wanted to be just like his big brother. Cool and popular and the talk of the town. And the only way to get there was to be just like the guy, which is not really a good thing because Eddie's brother is not a nice person. Eddie grew up around this and saw this as the way to become popular. All he has to do is copy his brother and everybody's gonna love him. Except that's not what happened, is it? It worked for Kevin, but not for Eddie. And even if he doesn't like the other kids in the cul-de-sac, he at least wants their approval. That or their money. Yes, Eddie's most well-known in the cul-de-sac for pulling these really elaborate and honestly way too creative for his age scams. Eddie's already an outcast, so he may as well go all the way with it, right? Making as much money off the other kids as he can so that he can buy his number one favorite snack, Jawbreakers. What's the harm in doing this? Everybody already hates him, so he's not risking his reputation. And besides, this'll help him get a feeling of power. If he can't run the social game of the cul-de-sac, he may as well run the economic one. But we've talked a lot about how Eddie views Kevin and the other cul-de-sac kids, but how does he view his friends? Judging by what I said earlier, it can't be positive at all. Clearly, he treats them with no regard for their own well-being. Except, no, that's not true. Deep down, even though he doesn't want to admit it, Eddie cares a lot about his friends. They're all he really has. With the rest of the cul-de-sac shunning him, he can always look to Ed and Double D for that bit of moral support that he always needed. And even if it doesn't always work, they're always there for each other to lend a helping hand. Like when Ed was feeling down and little Ed blew, Double D and Eddie did whatever they could to cheer him up. Eddie did protest to it, of course. But that's partially because a lot of the things that Double D was having him do were kind of embarrassing, to say the least. Or there's the episode of Fistful of Ed. Double D suddenly becomes the school bully through no fault of his own, and Eddie decides to be a sidekick. Yeah, here he's just kind of leeching off Double D's popularity and power. Once again, calling back to his desire to be in control and in power. He sees the error of his ways and decides to stand up for Double D when the Kanker sisters are sexually assaulting him. Especially considering how selfish Eddie had been in the rest of the episode, that was a really nice moment. Good one, Eddie. And of course, we can't talk about Eddie having a softer side without mentioning the finale, Ed, Ed and Eddie's Big Picture Show. There are two moments in particular that I want to highlight. The first one is where it looks like Double D is gonna break off the friendship. He's had it with Eddie's constant scams and getting them in trouble, especially when he didn't do anything really that wrong. And Eddie takes it really hard. First he lashes out in anger, and then he decides to blame himself. He's the reason they're in this mess. He's the reason that they had to flee Peach Creek. And if owning up to his mistakes and making himself look like a failure is what it will take in order to keep his friend, then he's gonna do it. He can't lose Double D, not after all they've been through together. Showing that yes, as hard as Eddie might be on Ed and Double D, he values them a lot. And then there's the moment at the end where Eddie comes clean about how bad of a person his brother is and that all he ever wanted was to be just like him. For the first time in the entire show, Eddie breaks down and he's 100% vulnerable, taking off all masks of confidence and dominance and aggression and he's the person that he always was deep down. 
a sad, lonely kid who just wanted to be loved. And in the end, he finally gets what he wants. Although not in the same way that he was expecting it. He's part of the group now and he's got a bunch of friends. He's just not their end-all, be-all, Fawn-style leader. And he's cool with it. He doesn't really want that anymore. He wants to belong. And after six seasons in a movie, he's finally done it. I think we've all known an Eddie in our life. Or maybe we still do now. Someone who puts on a big show and talks the talk but it's really overcompensating for some massive insecurities. Even if it's not as extreme as what Eddie went through, I think we can relate to him in some way. Who out there doesn't want to belong and try to change themselves to fit in with a certain group? At least when they were younger, because at the Ed's age, what was it, like 14 or something? They're in middle school, so yeah, it all adds up. This is very common. There's a lot of social pressure and who's cool and who's not stuff going around. It's a mess. And thanks to his no good brother, Eddie got caught right up in it. But at least we can rest easy knowing that Eddie is no longer the way he used to be. He's now one of the gang. Which means that the King of Cons has decided to retire. So the cul-de-sec is now safe once again. Well, folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? What do you think of Eddie and what's your favorite Eddie moment? Comment below and let us know because we're always excited to hear what you guys have to say. And if you look on the screen, you can see the names of our Patreon executive producers. And if you'd like to see your name right with the others, then consider donating to our Patreon, which has a link in the description below. Come on, it's only cheap. Anyways, thanks for watching, beautiful friends. I'll see you guys next time, okay?